Hi guys, this is Linda and welcome back to Radical Punch. So today's topic is about the beauty of visualization. In our last episode, we talked about the power of data and how you can scrape data from social media platforms. Today, we're going to talk about in how far visualizations can contribute in understanding patterns and structures of huge amounts of data. Before we show you a few examples, this is what we expect from cool visualizations. Numero uno. A contemporary visualization should always include an intuitive navigation and the ability to interact with the data so that people can always explore the data according to their specific needs. The second thing that's important to us is KISS. Mwah! Keep it smart and simple. Don't try to overwhelm us. Think of the needle in the haystack. Think of the relevant story that you're trying to tell us and focus on that topic. <laughs> the third thing that we look for in visualizations is picking the right visualization format for your data. Look at your data, think of the story you're trying to tell, and then pick the visualization format. The first visualization that we'd like to show is called The Path of Protest. It was done by The Guardian and it shows an interactive timeline of the Middle East protests. You can explore the timeline starting in December 2010. You can roll over the icon and see the related articles published by The Guardian. That way you can look up protests, political moves, international responses and regime changes in a specific Middle East country. Would you like to turn into a Dr. House or what would he do with 7.2 million medical records? Check out this interactive viz about your medical illnesses. MIT was able to figure out how often one symptom was linked to another. The symptom abdominal pain, for example, is often linked with the symptom vomiting. The data is gender sensitive, which means the visualization changes depending on whether you look at it from a male or female perspective. Size indicates how often one symptom occurs. The color indicates the category the symptom falls under. If all that node mapping layout is confusing, you can also look at it as a circle. Last but not least, we found an engagement study published by Social Flow and it shows how different audiences retweeted messages from news organizations. This is the overview of the broadcasters you can compare. Let's look at The Economist, for example. The visualization shows the average number of followers, friends and the amount of tweets they have posted. Now, let's compare it with Al Jazeera English. The size of the circle indicates the number of followers. The Economist has a lot more followers than Al Jazeera English. The overlapping part indicates the amount of followers that follow both accounts. The cool thing is you can compare any of these broadcasters and see their Twitter information. Inspired by this visualization, we decided to create our own visualization. Smile! We took the Twitter account from Pepsi and the Twitter account from Coca-Cola and decided to compare them. What we found out was shocking. We saw that 25,271 of those who follow Pepsi also follow Coca-Cola. What does that mean? It's either Pepsi or Coke. Pepsi, Coke. Pepsi, Coke. Why would people want to follow both accounts? Thank you for all the comments, tweets, likes and pluses from our last show. We've decided to thank each and everybody individually. Thank you very much. Lisa R. Marcus S. Ingo K. Nicole F. John M. Anya. Robert L. And Justin Bieber. If you have visualizations that you'd like to share with us, we'd love to get in touch with you. Write to us, comment, tweet us. And if you are one of the followers who follow Pepsi and Coke, drop us a line.